This is Twit. Okay, I, I wanted to ask Renee about this one, and I don't know if you have a thought on it or not. The secret M1 Apple coprocessor. It's kind of a link baity title, but a developer named Dougal Johnson has discovered that there is a, a Matrix coprocessor, the AMX Apple Matrix coprocessor, inside the M1 that is not neither documented nor revealed. And the basic explanation of this is that ARM which Apple has an ARM architecture license. ARM allows companies to add additional microcode, but not to make it public because they don't want to fragment the ARM, you know, ecosystem. So uh, a company like Apple can say, look, what we really need is more instructions like matrix processing instructions, which are used for artificial intelligence and gaming, all sorts of stuff. We want to add some instructions. We keep them private in a private library, Developers have access to it through the library, but it doesn't fragment the ecosystem. And that's, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, what this AMX is doing. Is that right, I Renee? Mean, Did I, I get I that right? I beg the premise. Yeah, but I, I beg the premise of the article uh, or the, the discovery because Apple's been really upfront about the AMX. They've had it up on stage oh. numerous oh. times. Well, never They've mind. They've pointed it out. They've, it was just link -based Yeah, then. No, like, got I, me. I, I really didn't get, yeah. Um, they, but the reason, like the thing is that, and it, it, it highlights another part of the part of the problem is that for some reason, Apple people, some people don't want to give Apple any credit for like the M1 or the A14 or any of these. Oh, so it's just ARM. They, talk about they it, just they say, took oh, the ARM. ARM chip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like when they talk about AMD, they never say, oh, the x86. They just, they say AMD or they say Intel. Right. Like I, I just say Apple, like, because that's the parody here. No one's looking at a PS5 and saying, oh, that's such great x86 inside that thing. It's no, it's a really good um, AMD. Uh, CPU uh, for uh, SOC, and and one of the reasons is Apple switched from their design license after the A5 and got an architecture license, and they have, as far as I know, one of the most permissible architecture licenses available, yeah. and they can do all sorts of custom things with it. And the whole reason ARM is doing V9 now, the upcoming ARM V9 uh, instruction set architecture, is to backport a lot of the things Apple did because they were <laughs> such a high volume premium. Like they, they just had to solve a lot of problems that ARM hadn't had to solve yet they are bringing all of those things or many of those things like the security the neural technology all of those to everybody at arm not in exactly the same way but they thought good ideas let's propagate them but a lot of that stuff it's 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 an arm instruction set that apple is using is a very small part of the cpu that they're still using and yeah. i find all this, this the banter around it fascinating from so a is, is it the case then that there are there are probably many more extensions like this to the architecture that just you know apple for, for completely appropriate reasons, keeps to itself. Does that make sense? That this is just one of many. Yeah, like I, I'm sure the like they they keep their silicon IP really t like people go and shoot the dies, you know, for a reason. Right. Um, but the case of the of the AMX, the Apple Matrix uh, multipliers, they decided that just a, an Apple neural engine wasn't enough. That there were some cases where the CPU was better tasked or the GPU right. was better tasked. So they created a machine learning controller, the same way they had a performance controller to decide which tasks needed big cores versus small cores. They have a machine learning controller that decides this this particular AI task is better suited for the compute cores in the CPU or the compute cores in the GPU or the, the dedicated cores in the ANE. And then it moves things around. It, it round trips them. And because of unified memory, it's an incredibly efficient process. And that gives them a lot of advantages. But it's like this has been on the slides for two, three years already. It's so good I'm link bait and I fell for it. I mean, I have to say for years, I bought the Windows Secrets books for the same reason. Secret APIs have always been a fascination of developers. Apple and Microsoft both have done this for years. And, you know, sometimes they're accused of keeping them to themselves. Like, we have a secret API so that our programs will work better than your programs. I don't think that's the, ever been the case with Apple. They, they expose those in the libraries. And uh, you don't have to yeah. know about AMX. It just happens automatically, just like all microcode it's happens. It's abstracted, right? Yeah, unless you're writing yeah, assembly it language. It it's always again. abstracted, yeah. So and I don't think Apple I move things around under the covers. Like, we just see the interface, but they can keep changing the pipes. They can put in better pipes, right. and your stuff still works because you're not targeting a pipe. Right. You're targeting the junction in front of it. Well, and, yeah. and in fact, um, for years, there have been hidden or deprecated API calls even uh, and yep. Apple will say, don't use these. And for years, developers have used them anyway. And then their software breaks when the new operating system comes out or new hardware comes out. And they get all up in arms like 
but you shouldn't have used them. The Apple well, Watch moved from 32-bit to 64-bit with zero developer stress at all. It was managed because of bit code, yeah, and that's yeah. remarkable in today's yeah, architecture yeah. world. Sorry, Andy. Just, just quickly, to, to be fair, the reason why people, uh, developers, t keep using these old APIs is because they work. Yeah, and, and they're faster they, they, often. They, yeah, they, they they work, and oftentimes when Apple gives them something they want to replace it with, that thing doesn't work or right. it's not appropriate for uh, for their task. Uh, and just uh, just getting back a, a moment to uh, talking about, oh well, Apple has this special coprocessor that they they haven't documented. Uh, that's uh, that's 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 bunkum, of course. But of course, the they also do they also hold certain entitlements. Uh, for for app permissions to themselves, so that they can, their apps can do things that they don't let other third party apps do, or that will only let us very very small handful of blue chip apps do this fu do this function this one way, or give them an exception to uh, an app store rule for for API use that they won't let the general public use uh, in the developer community. So that's oftentimes one of the reasons why the reasons why if there is like a metal cabinet anywhere near a developer's desk and it has a he forehead shaped dent in it, that's one of the reasons. <laughs> <laughs> why that dent is there. <laughs>